Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Halo 2. Released on the 9th of November 2004, this gaming masterpiece sparked controversy throughout the community for its intense and unfair difficulty. And while there are many difficulties to choose from, we are of course talking about Legendary Mode. The last time I played Halo 2 was on easy. Brother, uh, what's that? However, today that changes because we're doing Legendary, no skulls, no helmets. <laughs> Halo 2 is made up of 15 levels, each representing their own unique difficulties. Among these, Grave Mind stands out, renowned for being the longest and hardest. But enough screwing about, let's play Halo 2 on Legendary. And I'm already dead. <laughs> Today we'll be playing the game through the Master Chief Collection, which has the option to swap between remastered and classic graphics. I'll be taking on most of the game through the lens of remastered, because how else will I keep my retention rate high for the viewers who care about ultra cool graphics? Our first moment of action, a break in from the enemy covenant as they try desperately to stay relevant. We've already crossed out two missions. How may you ask? Well, majority of it was Sergeant Johnson yapping away. The first initial rooms were a breeze, where maintaining a safe distance was the key to staying alive. However, as I progressed, I found myself facing the wrath of Cairo Station. This particular room turned into a colossal pain in my rear end, with deaths piling up fast and my patience wearing thin. After dying a dozen or so times, we were missing one weapon in our arsenal. Something that will save us from pain and we'll need to use for the rest of the game. Introducing the plasma pistol, the bread and butter of the Covenant arsenal, its overcharged blasts obliterate shields, setting up the classic noob combo takedown. At last, the area was cleared after I chucked the dirtiest plasma grenade of my entire Halo career. Yeah, bitch! Basking in the glory of my successful plasma grenade tactics, I confidently advanced through to the next room, only to have my ego shot down in a matter of minutes. I don't give a goddamn half aim sound or whatever, it don't matter to me. I realized that by maintaining the high ground and occasionally rotating, we could easily navigate throughout each and every room. Sir, they've hit the second tower. But it wasn't until this catwalk full of elites would start to wear me down. And while we were technically only on the first mission of the game, I wasn't giving up just yet. To stay motivated, I started using speedrun tactics like basic parkour to make the experience of playing on Legendary a bit more bearable. And it totally took one attempt. <laughs> and I actually finally managed to pull it off. Yeah! With another checkpoint under our belt and a successful king hit underway, it was time to go outside and touch grass until the unexpected happened. Here was another case where I chose to conceal myself and slowly eliminate the horde of enemies, to which we happily advanced forward. In the final room, however, I encountered a lone marine whose only intention seemed to be displaying his pristine pearly chompers. All that was left was to flush away the remaining elites with a cheeky plasma grenade and watch this iconic cutscene of Master Chief riding the Covenant bomb. Finally, Cairo Station was complete. Next up was Outskirts, a mission I was born to play. Do you see that yellow arrow pointing us in the right direction? Do we avoid it? Oh, no. Do we jump onto this conveniently placed light here? Oh, no. We do jump on the conveniently placed light, which then lets us jump onto the roof of Outskirts. We pull off a cheeky grenade jump and now we're outskirting the outskirts. And by jumping on this very friendly pelican, we can surf it to the next section of the map as it starts to take off. We began by bullying the elites below, abusing them with our sniper, to which we hit the next checkpoint. Finally, we were given some backup marines as a reward. Oh shit! <laughs> I meant to use my flashlight! With no flashlight in sight, we resorted to using just the flash from our arsenal. Why was I trying to rhyme there? Oh look, our first vehicle! And our first vehicle was an absolute disaster. Death after death, it almost felt like we had taken two steps back from our progress and everything was getting us killed. Even our own men betrayed. A lot of this game requires RNG from the gods. Luckily enough for us, we managed to squeeze past the blockade of enemies with a smidge of health left. 
until I got stuck under the shadow. Dying started to become the norm and I was left with my ego shattered once more. I can't keep showing you every single death of this Halo 2 legendary playthrough. The video will end up being two hours past its runtime. So moving forward, I will count every single death, but just only show the most significant ones. And when I say the most significant ones, I mean for comedic effect. Just like how I spent the last 20 minutes avoiding enemies in this final room, when I should have just spam left mouse click to obliterate every enemy standing in my way. Next up is Metropolis, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is a tank. What? No way. This is really not good. Okay. <laughs> but screw the tank. I'm that type of player to drive with the Warthog, avoiding all combat until making my way back to secure the tank. Not only this time, all the enemies have despawned. I'm that type of player. I'm that guy. You're not that guy. Watch out, guys. Guys, watch out, you idiots! No! <laughs> Too bad those guys didn't survive long enough to see my rampage unfold as I cheese this ta- I believe if I'm not mistaken, there's a jackal right here. Yes. Switching to classic graphics and head glitching that sniper jackal was probably the easiest way to take him out. And this one was just self-explanatory. Well done, 47. For my next trick, I'll be showing you how to despawn the enemies in this vicinity without- for my next trick, I'll be showing you how to despawn the enemies. By jumping against this wall, we actually trigger a checkpoint. That, my friends, is how we save time. All the enemies are literally gone. All that was left to do was take out the next group of enemies, but instead, I, Master Chief, decided to eat the Covenant cannon fire. But do you know what else Master Chief is eating? Hello Fresh. That's right, today's video sponsor is none other than Hello Fresh, America's number one meal kit with fresh ingredients and chef crafted recipes at a price you like. And Master Chef over here, of course. Which can be delivered right to your door. How convenient is that? Plus, now you can treat yourself to and pair Hello Fresh's delicious meals with free desserts for life. Get one free dessert item per box while your subscription is active. Ditch the meal planning blues. Do you think Master Chief has time to go food shopping? No! Think again, as HelloFresh covers a range of up to 45 recipes and even more that support your lifestyle. Plus, when you sign up and use my QR code on screen right now, you can receive up to 16 meals free, plus a free dessert for life while your subscription is active. Why do you think I have so much energy in my videos? Because I save money, eat healthy, and stress less with HelloFresh. So what are you waiting for? Go and check out HelloFresh and start cooking up a storm. So I started cooking up grenades. Screw this warthog. I needed it. Fuck! But you know what else I needed? To get the hell out of here. And in style, as I leaped on board an enemy ghost and simply drove away without their permission. In the next area, I ate some more Covenant candy. Maybe a few too many times. Until I started to fight back. The only way I knew how to. By strapping on with force. It's not working! I've had a grenade! We're also nearly out of time. As we are nearing the end of the mission, I got a little excited and decided to go boom boom real smooth. Time was ticking and so was my patience as I cleaned up the remaining elites with my green juices. Too bad we didn't get part time for this mission. I wonder why. The Arbiter was next up on our list, a classic Halo 2 plot twist which lets us now take control of a disgraced elite known as the Arbiter Thelvadam. They are a part of the same species as these guys. <laughs> and since we are now an elite species, we can now turn invisible under a strict time limit. As I made it into the next room, I began getting slapped, spit on, and then brazed bare ass by the flock of enemy covenants. As we hit the next checkpoint, I started using my plasma grenades again in shockingly raw fashion. I was sticking them all with my glowy balls and making some amazing progress along the way. I was even sticking them to my friendlies. That, that's, a, that's a friendly. But while most of my balls were sticking, some were just flicking past enemies, causing all sorts of dramas for my total death count. We aren't even halfway through the game yet. If we wanted to get through this mission efficiently, we'd have to start sticking some more stickies, which we did and successfully moved forward. The fuck is that noise? The fuck is that noise?
That that was that was probably the noise. Speaking of noises, it's a miracle I haven't had any noise complaints from my neighbors since I've been locked in playing this silly game all week. Oh look, there's our escape vehicle. Let's see if we can approach it. No, of course not. But we can cloak ourselves and make a dash for the door. Unnoticed until it's too late and the enemy covenant have been bamboozled yet again. How on earth did I just die? Clearly the best method is landing on top because being on top is always good. How on earth did I- And we're through to the next mission. The Oracle. Continuing with the Arbiter, we pass the Flood Sperm Tank and start hacking at the Flood Corpses. This energy sword is crucial to us as it takes down our foes. But what is the Flood exactly? The Flood is a parasitic alien species that poses a threat to both humans and the Covenant alike. They are adaptive organisms capable of infecting anything in their path and are most scary when they infect the friendly human marines. This honestly still haunts me from my childhood. But these genetically grotesque munchkins won't scare me no more as we jump off the moving platform which gives us some space to snipe them off. Holy shit! Wow, that was... that was quite scary. I just pissed myself. After the platform had finally reached the bottom, it was time to make a leap of faith and secure the next checkpoint. Hesitant about moving forward into the next room and having died shortly after that, our only option was to pick off the enemy flood with our trusty sniper rifle. Another day, another victory for the OG. Taking out the sweats. And it wouldn't be an official Blue Ben video without me dying to plasma grenades. These plasma grenades were so accurate that they could learn a new language and I'd still be dying to them. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier. I think I'm dead. Well, about time we saw some progress. This will save me from the storm. I love this cinematic and then you just change the graphics and it's like... <laughs> A cool little trick I learned that's absolutely gonna blow your mind is this elevator can crush you and then flick you up to the top and you become invincible. I am not joking when I say this, you become invincible for the rest of the mission. <laughs> well, I suppose you're invincible until you fall off the face of the earth. Where am I even going? I, I, I need to reset the checkpoint. After resetting the checkpoint and taking down the connected power line cord thingies, it's time to head straight down and escape. However, this time, we're still invincible, baby. Bungie, think, bro. During our escape, a grunt kindly laid out some plasma grenades for us to munch down on. We catch up to the heretic and begin our epic fight for justice. Although, there is one problem. He's glitched and won't move an inch. So I move a few inches into him. Stop groaning, bro. Well, he's been beaten senseless, and we drag his sorry ass out. That was probably the most fun I've had with Halo 2 Legendary so far. Delta Halo was next, and you've guessed it. Halo is back. Landing safely on the inhabited installation 05, we found ourselves amidst the dense jungle terrain. And the key word is terrain, because that's all you'll be seeing for the majority of this mission, as I take my speed running to an all-time high. Literally. By triggering this checkpoint, we were safe to continue exploring the terrain until it was time to cause some serious carnage from above. Sliding down this hill like I'd be sliding into your DMs, we were greeted with some beautiful scenery. By jumping outside this window, we can avoid going inside to trigger the bridge, but this is Halo 2. We can never avoid death. Now that we've obtained a ghost, we can actually start this mission. Oh shit, I broke it and now I need to buy it. Hey, uh, just this one, thanks. You gotta be kidding me. I won't lie to you right now, this part had me struggling for quite some time. I was all bark but no bite. But now it's time for speedrun. <laughs> what the hell is this script writing? Ascending the hill and skillfully bypassing an entire section, we found ourselves triggering the next checkpoint, ready to rinse and repeat. For anyone wondering why I'm playing classic graphics for this part, this is why. <laughs> Look at that beautiful mess. It was time to focus up as this part required some serious brain juice. By carefully drifting down this slope, we can trigger the next scene, allowing us to successfully move forward. It's been done. Yes. Great success. We were nearing the end of, uh, what's the name of this mission called again? The, um, there's, <laughs> there's just too many. All right. I've, I've lost track. The script is just a gigantic mess. All right. It's just, it's, uh, D Delta Halo. Sorry. Excuse the brain rot. Regret? More like make me want to forget. Regretfully, regret was our next mission, and it sucked like a couple of donkey nuts. Seriously, this place nearly made me uninstall the game altogether. My big brain strats weren't working, nothing was working, and everything was against me. Especially these bloody sniper jackals. I fear no man, but that thing... It scares me. 
This was the only skip I managed to pull off, and I don't even think it was that worth it. Because ladies and gentlemen, this... This is where the fun begins. At this point, I felt like I was facing real players in a real multiplayer match. It was only until these hunters became a huge pushover that I realized I was playing the campaign. Oh, and now backup arrives, you pricks. Backup won't save me. <laughs> I've never felt more relieved to see the next area in the distance. Backup won't save me. I popped on my parkour shoes and headed up until I was greeted with the biggest gun I've ever seen. And I'm not talking about the one in my pants. And when I say in my pants, I mean Master Chief, not me. I, I have a pretty small- If we chuck a plasma grenade down this lift, we can wipe out all the jackals. It was about time this level started to become a little easier on the eyes. Who am I bloody kidding? This is legendary mode. And I died more times in this room than in any mission so far. What if instead of trying to kill the enemies, we just walk underneath them, to the side and through the doors? I can't, I, I have, I, I've got no words. And now we're underwater. And this has honestly got me feeling like we're playing Bioshock right now with Katana yapping in my ear. All I can say is they really make you feel welcome around here. The climax of the mission lay just a stone throw away. And go away, Katana, because this next area before the final area is the biggest piece of dog shit. The slow moving hovercraft makes a complete stop for us and with no backup in sight, caused my little brain to implode. And I truly mean that. The last checkpoint I received was meaningless. Rocket launcher? Good luck, because you need to pray for it to work. The rockets itself had it out for me, and more times than not, killed me more than the enemy. But things can change. We can adapt, and we can improve. Nope. It's just plain old luck. Well, we're finally here. The end of regret and the end of this boss. But he isn't just a boss. This man is 91 years old and I beat the living daylights out of the poor fella. I'm not joking, I googled his birthday. <laughs> the old man has now been dispatched and it was time to flee. Sacred Icon was next up and it was again another Arbiter mission. uncomfortable silence. As we head down this very fun laundry chute and begin shooting up a transformer, death was of course on the horizon, but so was just plain stupidity coming from me. What the hell was I even trying to achieve? While I was getting my ass put in place, I put the game in its place by pulling off the cleanest grenade jump I've ever done. And yeah, maybe maybe it took a few tries, all right? Well, what's, what's the big deal? All that was left now was to make a swift exit. I don't know what I'm doing! What are you doing Robinson? Ah, shit, shit. I distinctly remember being scared of this part of the game as a kid, but now, well... Is this game glitched? We continued down some more laundry chutes and successfully made it outside for some fresh air. And some fresh new tactics to try out. Okay, ne never mind. <laughs> why? Why do I even bother at this? We met up with our elite chums and began fighting off a few waves of the flood. Final cutscene commenced and finished. Now onto quarantine zone, which is just a continuation of the last mission. This was honestly quite a short mission at best, and majority of it can be spent screwing around on the ghost, avoiding all forms of combat. But in typical Blue Ben fashion, that was not the case at all. <laughs> no, no. This one's the money, this one's the- Move it! Ow! Ow! Let's be real here though, lots of these deaths were just plain bad luck. Oh brother, this guy stinks! But I can't just show you the bad and the ugly. This play was so good I began shaking towards the end as a dose of pure adrenaline hit me. Is this the first time I've successfully pulled off a strat in one attempt? GDQ contender, perhaps? I've managed to glitch myself onto the top of this moving platform in time for my next video, which, at this rate, will probably be a Halo any percent. <coughs> While it does make me look like a giant pussy, it gave me leverage towards the end of the mission, just in time for our next one. Before I recorded Gravemind, I said the following words. Longest and hardest. Yeah, well, this idiot right here was right. In the first two seconds of the mission, you are dead. What's it all mean? 
What's the point? But if you back up towards the left and sit behind your first piece of cover, you can survive. And lucky for me, we popped a cheeky checkpoint as well. Now all that was left was to retreat into the nearest corner and cry like a f bitch. Because this mission was about to get absolutely bloody ridiculous, and I don't say that lightly. In the first room alone, I tallied my total deaths to 45. I could have covered every square inch of this place in my corpses if I wanted to. Nonetheless, my experience in this room went a bit like this. Shoot aggressively, duck for cover, wait for shield to regen, and rinse and repeat. I won't waste your time any longer on this one. I will respectfully say this though, once I had finally cleared the room, it was just a gigantic mess. Cortana finally to my aid and of course yapping away, she makes herself useful for once in this playthrough by unlocking doors. Let's just hope this next room is okay. Well that room's over, let's go to the next room. Yeah, it's not any better. What the hell is even that? I'm done. I found that the best way to tackle this type of situation was to stick your glowy balls on both elites and then proceed to make a mad dash for it and suppress fire the waves of enemies before jumping down on this pillar of autumn. Sniping the two jackals and securing the checkpoint, death was of course imminent, especially by being beaten to death by these hunker spunks called brutes. Not only are these brutes tanky as all hell, but they beat you like a stepfather under the influence of booze. I have no comment for this next room. Other than it's brutal. Legend. You see, here's the route I would take. I'd assassinate the brood on the right and then make my way down to the bottom floor. I've missed it. I've missed it again. I've missed it again. I've missed it again. That's, that's a sticky. I've kissed it again. I'm suing. In just this area alone, I died 79 times. But that didn't stop me from cheesing this area by backstabbing the wave of enemies upon me until I got distracted by a bloody Steam notification. Why am I getting notified about the spring sale? That put me off. Let's make that 80 deaths. While we triggered a checkpoint and investigated for bugs, we released the Marines that were held captive. Maybe now I'll finally get some backup around these parts. A new area, a new plan, jackal snipers are fucking everywhere, man. Everywhere I turned, I was sniped down until I pulled off my favorite speedrun shortcut so far. I wasn't finished yet as I continued my shortcut spree. Maybe this time I'll be good enough for you, GDQ. You know what? I, I, I'm getting good at this. I'm really impressing my audience. Ex excuse me, what is going on? So maybe speedrun shortcuts weren't my thing, but that doesn't mean I just stopped trying altogether. We keep moving forward. We keep impressing ourselves. That was actually pretty good. And most importantly, we keep out of sight, out of mind from our enemies. Wait a minute. Surely we'll be finished this mission soon. It's not like it's been two hours or something. No, you're wrong. Instead, it's gonna be one more hour of pain. Maybe I'm going a little insane in the membrane, but there's casually just two hunters in my way, and they're both wanting to tear me a new asshole. Well, that's over. Like 21 deaths later over. But is this the exit? No, it's the final area, and it's fucking dreadful. The final room, and it got me like this. Man, was this dreadful. But at this point, I believe it's over. Everything has been killed. The final room is full of silence. Ah, what the f Oh, f no! No! Surely there won't be any more jump scares, right? Right? God, please give me strength. They weren't going to beat me. The final room had its final wave, but I had already rotated and my sniper rifle had them all packing. That wasn't even the final room. The final room was glimmering in its emptiness. We had reached the end, and in total, roughly our deaths equaled to 330. It was only up from here, and I mean the death count. Uprising was next, and we are the Arbiter again. As I began navigating my way through the jungle with its familiar terrain for me, I was caught wondering, I haven't died yet. I've barely been shot at all. Am I only- Yes? Nah, you see, this is Halo 2. They wouldn't just reward you of an easy mission after the devastating struggle of Gravemind. It just wouldn't be right. And neither are these four Looney Tunes sitting right here. They should be deleted. Or maybe I should just delete the game and never play again, because this one area alone made it feel like Gravemind Electric Boogaloo. Step aside and let this man go through Galoo. Like, seriously, man. Come on! 
Need a break. I made a last ditch effort to see if I could pull off the tree glitch, but the jackal snipers just kept bumming me down. But sometimes in life, you just have to see it through. The nightmare was over. The tree glitch had been pulled off and we could use this glitch to finish the mission early. All you have to do is stand on that black spot and the mission is over. Hi, Charity was next, and man, do I need Charity to fund my therapy sessions. <laughs> this trippy scene was probably the only best part of the entire mission, because yeah, okay, we're dominating here with the sniper, taking down the sweats, and the death counter hasn't even moved up just yet. What? E excuse me? But that's not my problem. Dying isn't the problem. It's the fucking lighting. I can't see jack shit up in here. Bravo 6 go in light mode because I need it. There isn't anything wrong with this mission per se. I just feel like I can barely show you any of it. This room became a bit of a struggle, however, but after I began using the elevator as cover, it became a breeze. Trippy sequence! The final room had me a little giddy. We were getting towards the end of the game and clearly I couldn't hold my excitement. But there was a boss that we had to take care of before we finished. And it was this stupid fucking box. Go away! Get out of here! Move! We finally triggered the cutscene and a final cutscene for our good friend Master Chief. Is that the Eiffel Tower? The Great Journey. The last mission of Halo 2. The end of Halo 2 as we know it. Wait, we play as the Arbiter? So what, you're, you're telling me Master Chief is just sitting on the couch watching the telly? First things first, we pull out the Elite from the Spectre, stick him, and park the Spectre in a safe place. We then grab a ghost and start driving. And driving till we can't drive no more. We obviously die a little bit to make things fair, do a checkpoint glitch, and uh... Where did the wraiths go? Where, where, where did they go? Clearly I'm taking the ghost into uncharted territory and it's making things spicy. These brutes have no idea where I am. Just look how silly they all look. I have to stop playing around and start doing things seriously. I mean, how on earth will I be able to beat this game any other way? I must admit that was, that was quite impressive. Get away from me. Get away from me. Ah! Finally, backup had arrived. We were reunited with the crew once more to take down the final brute boss. We snagged ourselves a juicy banshee and headed towards our stashed spectre. Only this time, we're gonna use it. We're not gonna use it. Only this time, we're gonna... And we're gonna use it. With a smidge of health left, we're gonna use it. Underwater. But Blueben, what will you use it for? For the final boss, of course. Don't you dare. No! Oh! Oh, <laughs> The worst part about this scenario is I got a checkpoint loaded on me. I, I'm sorry. I, I just, I can't stop laughing because I'm in pain. I'm up. I'm I got up to the top and fell straight down to the bottom. This is my D-Day. It's time to come back to shore. I wasn't restarting the mission over this. I cloaked myself, headed in the opposite direction of where I was supposed to go, swapped out my Banshee for a Freshie and headed back angry. I'm in. Bum rushing the enemies, I've stormed the brute headquarters, but I got pinned down and my ass ripped apart. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the final boss room. We stand and go to war with our elite chums for the toughest fight of our lives. And the total death count for this room was two. It, it, it was bloody two. It took me two attempts and the game was finished. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Halo 2 on Legendary. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It is a very long video, so if you're still here, thank you so much for sticking it through and watching this entire campaign unfold. These are the stats on screen. I, I, I'm hoping Games Done Quick reaches out to me, but with that death count, I'm not too sure. <gasps>